So hello and welcome to the second video on VBA collections. Now, the big thing about collections is that we can store a lot of data in them, but what really gives it the power is the for loop. So using the for loop, we can run through thousands of items. And what's good as well is the way we write the for loop means that no matter how many items are in a collection, the same for loop will work. So it gives us a lot of flexibility. So let's put a for loop in here. Now in VBA, there's two types of for loops. There's a for each loop and there's a standard for loop. So we're going to look at both of those and I'm going to show you when to use each of them. So if you want to use the for loop, the for each loop, I should say, we use a variable and the variable is a variant. So variant means that VBA at runtime will decide what it is. And the reason for this is that a collection can have many different types of items. So we could write a collection, say that has a list of strings, it could have a list of dates and so on. And if we use the item as a variant, it means our for loop will work with any type. Now I say any type, but when we're dealing with an object, it will actually read the object okay, but we ha how we'd access the object after that, we'd have to treat it just a little different. But we'll see that in a later video. So we basically say for item, and we say each, so for each item in collection. And then we say next item, and that's our for loop. This will run through every item in our collection. Now we want just an example that it works. So we want to print it all out to the immediate window. And we use debug print to do that. So the immediate window, you can do alt, we can do like basically view immediate window here, or you can see control G is the shortcut. I'm going to double click the top of it here and just put it beside us so we can see. And then I'm going to press F5 and we're going to run this code. So you see we ran the code and it wrote out everything. So let's step through the code again because stepping through the code is always a nice way to see exactly what's going on. So we've added everything and then we say for each item. So what's actually an item you can see here when I put the cursor over item is that item is currently Apple and debug print will write out Apple. Now we go to the next line. So this means we've, we've the far has got us the next thing and that's pair. Step over this line and the next item says, give us the next item in the collection. And the next item is the mango, I print that out and so on. So that's how we use the for each loop. Now we also have a for i loop. So let's just comment this one out and let's look at our for i loop. So with a for i loop, we're basically going through the index. So we need a long integer. And let's just push this code right, right up the screen here so we can see it. And we say for i equals one to the first item two, and it's collection.count. So it'll go through each item in the collection and we can access the item using the current number. And of course, we're gonna debug print out this guy. And then at the end, we have next i. So you can see it's kind of it's similar-ish to what we have in the for each loop, not not hugely different. So let's pop this up, let's delete what we've got before, and let's run it again. So we run the code, and you can see it printed everything out just as the for each one did. So let's let's step through the code. I'm going to put a breakpoint here. You can get a breakpoint by pressing F9 or just clicking in the side, and it, the line becomes brown. When you run the code, it will pause when it hits that line. So if we look at i, I just put the cursor over i, you can see that i equals zero. So once we start i equals one, and we go to call position one, and call position one, now the VBA sometimes doesn't highlight variables if they get a bit more complex. So what we'll do is we'll right click on this and we'll add watch. And you can see the watch window here. You can see call i, so whatever, is in call position at i is apple. Now the next one, let's let's actually drop the i in there as well so we can see. In the next position, we're now i is two and the item at call i two is pair. So the item in the second position is pair and it writes out pair, you can see here. And then it's on the third one and that's mango, writes that out and the fourth one and so on. So you can see they both pretty much do the same job. So why use one over the other? Well, if you're just reading from items, the for each loop is much faster than the for i loop. And I'll have a look later in this video. We'll just have a look at the speed tests that I've run, and you can see very clearly that the for each is better. 
However, the one thing with the for each is that when you use for each, you, you basically get the items in the order from, from one to the last item. So the order that they're in is what you get. When you use the for loop, you can actually change the order. So for example, you could do something like step two, and this means it only picks every second item. So it jumps a step and it only gets the second. Now it's not often you really need to do this, but what you might need to do is if you wanted to read in reverse, for example, so collection to one, step minus one. So when we do the normal loop, we're actually using step one, but, it, but, but because that's default, we don't need to bother. But when we're going backwards, we have to say a step minus one to tell VBA the steps or otherwise v, the, the for loop won't happen. So if we go back, if we go like this, we can you can actually see that it reads everything in reverse. So orange, mango, pear, and apple. Now the, the other thing, as I said, is we can we could pick selections. We could say I just want the first two items. So we could say one, two, two, and then we we run the code and it just gives us apple and pear. So you can see the for each loop is much faster. But if we if we need kind of a bit of flexibility with the for loop then using the standard one is better. So now let's have a look at some of the speed tests that I've done so that we can see exactly what is the difference between the two for loops. Okay, so here are the two speed tests that I ran on the for loops. And the first one was very simple, assigning a variable. So you can see the two loops that I used here. We basically read through the collection and then we assign the variable to a string. So here is the results in milliseconds, and the results are for 20,000 tries and 100,000 tries. And you can see that the for each loop only takes three milliseconds, where the for loop takes 1,750. So that's a considerable difference. But you can see when we get up to 100,000 records, the for each loop hasn't really increased. It's only up to 13 milliseconds, but the for loop is up to 70,000 or 70 seconds. So it's a significant difference. And the thing to keep in mind here is that it doesn't matter when you're dealing with a small amount of data, but when you're dealing with a lot of data, then it's important to have the most efficient code. Now, the second one is writing to a worksheet. And in this case, you can see that for 10,000 records, the, dif the difference wasn't really that significant. For 20,000, it's beginning to increase. But for 100,000 records, you can see that it's four seconds versus 98 seconds. So here you can see that Clearly, the for each loop is faster than the for loop. So in the next lesson, what we're going to be looking at is reading from the collection to the worksheet and then reading from the worksheet to a collection.